So Stable Diffusion SDXL, the next level of Stable Diffusion. It's going to be coming up fairly soon. And so far, the results from this newer version have been pretty fantastic. And um, again, if you want to try it out, you can go to Dream Studio from the Stability AI website and get a chance to try it out online. But in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what to expect. Uh, so they've had Stable Diffusion SD uh, XL 0 0.9, uh, the beta version, which uh, they've used for testing for about, uh, I think, at least a month now. And uh, I wanted to look at a workflow which you might want to take a look at uh, for uh, how to use it within Comfy UI. So when the uh, Stable Diffusion SDXL uh, lands, it's going to be able to run on a an NVIDIA card with a minimum eight gigabytes of VRAM. It's going to be able to run on Linux uh, with an AMD card. Now, since Comfy UI can run on the CPU, uh, it's very slow on the CPU, but it can run on the CPU and it also supports Intel Arc. It's possible that you'll be able to run it with Intel Arc. I suspect you will need 16 gigabytes of VRAM to get the best results. You'll need one of the 16 gigabyte Intel GPUs uh, to get the best results. But I've had some feedback from users of uh, St Stable Diffusion, the current version, uh, and some of them have been able to use uh, the AMD GPUs on Linux. And other guys have told me that they're getting good responses using um, Intel Arc. So there is some variation there. You can use NVIDIA but if you are one of the Linux heads, you should be able to use other so other hardware as well. And like I say, with Comfy UI, which we're going to take a look at now, you can also use the CPU. Like I say, it has a separate file that you would uh, click on to get the CPU being your source. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be looking at is a workflow. This was shared by a guy on GitHub. And it's a very, very complex uh, arrangement. It is for Stable Diffusion uh, SDXL, and it runs the, the the software in the recommended recommended manner. Now we don't know exactly how because this is beta. This is the beta version. We don't know one hundred percent what the software is going to be like when it comes out. So it may be exactly as we see it here. Um, well, the, the stable diffusion may work exactly as we see it represented here, or it may be a little bit different. But in any case, w if you choose to open this up, what you'll find inside of Comfy UI is that you've got an option to choose the base model. And you start off with the base model, the SDXL base model. I had to change it from what it was when I opened up this workflow because the um, SDXL name, the name for the safe tensor was slightly different. I think the, um, the, the guy who d d developed this doesn't have any underscores, but, uh, once it, the name was changed, once, once I chose my files, uh, I've got a base file for SDXL and I've got a refiner file. So these are huge. These were about, about 15 gigs. This one is about five gigs, So they're fairly large files. And you have two models that you're going to use to run the software. One model uh, goes into one pass of the latent, the first pass latent, and the second gives you the second sampling. And I've played around with the, with the results, uh, with the numbers, with the settings already. And I've got my own kind of settings there, uh, which you we will take a quick look at these. So as you can see, the, the results for this one, uh, I wanted to create as kind of a mermaid and, uh, well, she's got the fish scales. She's got, she's underwater, obviously. And, um, it took a bit of time. Um, the natural setting is for 10, 1024 by 1024. That's where it, that, that's where you're really supposed to be using it. It's, um, essentially four times the size of the 512 by 512 that we were using with, uh, with 1.5. And uh, the arrangement is that we start off on the left hand side with um, the prompt. And there's a, kind of some information here about how you could uh, arrange the prompt. So there's a way of using it. I've tried to keep to, to, to the instructions here. So there's a place for putting in what are called linguistic, linguistic uh, positives. 
and then supporting positives. So the linguistics I've tried to put in according to the instructions, just putting, putting in a description, a good solid description of what I want to see. And then some supporting terms, which are more like the style and individual aspects of what I want, uh, the ones that are separated by a comma. And the results was initially not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, it was very tough to, to get this kind of uh, lifelike woman with the with the fish and the bubbles it was pretty tough it it wanted because i'm trying to draw a mermaid i think all the mermaids that it knows are they're cartoons I mean, where do you see mermaids in real life you generally don't i did try to put instagram mermaid because there are a lot of people who do that but it didn't quite work and i had to work uh, i mean at least she's got some fish scales but i had to do quite a lot of work to get it to to produce a mermaid uh, with 1.5 version 1.5 uh, stable diffusion 1.5 it, it's relatively easy to get it to put a human face on a mermaid on a fish body um, this one works differently it is super fast if you're using a gpu if you're using an amd uh, sorry if you're using an nvidia gpu this one renders in about 15 seconds but let's take a look at the individual uh, portions here so we've got the refiner and the refiner uh, just does the second round of processing. The base model does the first round. And these are connected. You can take a look at this yourself. But um, we've got here the positive refiner, which um, these have got widths. And the widths are somewhat larger than the, uh, the image, uh, the original image. The original image is about 1024. And then we've got positive base and a negative base. So... These are for the uh, for, for the clips. And then the clips obviously connect to the uh, latents. And here we've got a really nice feature. I really enjoyed working with the with the settings here. But essentially what I ended up doing was changing the way this worked quite a lot. Uh, and initially I think it had just about 20 steps. So much less than the typical um, stable diffusion, I don't know, the, the current one, maybe about 20, 30, 40 samples is typical. This one can work very well with much less than that. But I had this arrangement, which is not the default arrangement, it's quite a long way away from the default arrangement. But for, for, for the results that I wanted, it actually worked pretty well. Um, a lot of the settings have been put into these controls. So We've got a bunch of primitives here controlling some of the inputs and we've got a refiner CFG. We've got a negative score, positive A score, steps, base CFG. So a lot of the steps have been put here and this may be something you find a little bit easier to control uh, to change the settings down here without having to rush down here all the time. Perhaps you could just spend a lot of time here changing some of the key settings and uh, getting seeing what sort of results that you're going to get. Uh, with this one, we only have one image that comes up. Uh, in some of the other ones I've worked with, we have both the base image, which is related to this, and the refined image coming up. But for this one, we've just got the refined. It's a fairly clean setup. Um, and obviously, you can change it if you want to. You can change anything you want about the setup and try to get it to work your own way. The, the, the prompting is hard with this one. I found it a little bit harder. A uh, very basic prompting will produce quite often a good result, but it can be a little bit uh, unpredictable. Uh, for the supporting terms, I put in color, aquatic environment, that was important. Rough oil painting, which doesn't seem to do anything. Swirling water, beauty, beautiful droplets. And quite a lot of the time I needed to emphasize something. For instance, I needed to really, really emphasize happiness because it kept giving uh, the impression that the face of the model was someone who was drowning it was not smiling and i had to really really emphasize happiness in order to get the emotion that i wanted so the the happiness is the first thing that that, that appears in the prompt and then we've got some descriptive prompts which is more or less what the um what the suggestion is here we give a kind of a a detailed explanation of what we want to see but i had to put in happiness otherwise it, it just did not respect that i wanted the woman to be smiling the supporting terms a lot easier to use. I think I might have got better results if I stuck with 1024 by 1024, but I do like to experiment. 
And overall, this was a pretty successful experiment. And most of all, it gives me some ideas for thought about how I might want to arrange my own workflows. I do have my own workflow, which runs quite differently to this one. And maybe I might even show you that one. So yeah, this is my own uh, particular workflow. And um, what this one does, it does exactly the same thing. We've got the, the uh, positive negative prompts, collapse some of these, and then we've got two samplers. Um, but my workflow is kind of running from top to bottom, whereas the other one was from from, from bottom to top. Uh, with this one, we're seeing the base model here. We're seeing the refined model down here. So the refined model always has more detail than the base model. And uh, we first see the base model doing its calculation. We get to the VAE decode. We get our image. And with this setup, we actually end up with the with the final image. It doesn't take too long at all. That is our male and female uh, car with a man and a woman, surreal photographic style. That was the that was the prompt. The result is good. You get this high quality uh, output. It's pretty quick, but uh, basically, I'm getting decent scores, decent results within about twenty to thirty seconds, and quite often you can put in prompt after prompt and change the the seed and get really nice images one after the other but uh what i'll do is to leave it at that point i don't know exactly how the final version is going to work for sdxl that one's going to be coming out very soon and um it i i just wanted to give uh, an account of what the current workflow is like now the, the workflows might change a little bit so maybe a good idea after a week or so to update comfy ui and download the download the new files download the new models and to see how it all works together but for the time being that will be our quick exploration of sdxl 0.9